There is a high degree of risk in futures trading. If you've traded for more than one day, you know that you can and will lose money. Only trade with money you can afford to lose. Art Collins here. Thanks for joining me. Today, uh, I'm going to delve into something outside my normal wheelhouse, different in almost every way from what I normally do. I'm offering this for whatever it's worth because a lot of you are interested in Bitcoin, and I have to admit, although I should know better, I have a fascination for it myself. So I've done some thinking about it, and I'm happy to share those thoughts with you with the caveat that I don't have any understanding about the fundamentals of Bitcoin, and the technical insights I have are suspect and limited to the fact that I only have a small amount of past performance data at my arsenal. Now, if you're new to my presentations, you'll, uh, I am strictly a 100% uh, mechanical trader. Every entry, buy and sell, every profit target and stop loss is determined by hard and fast rules that were developed from past performance history. I've been inventing and personally trading systems in the futures market since 1986. I became a Chicago Board of Trade member in 1988 and have held seats ever since. Relying on money strictly from constant decision-making, not to mention unpredictable market whims, can get wearying after a while. So 18 years ago, I started writing and lecturing. I've appeared across the country and beyond uh, and done numerous online talks, such as this one. And I wrote four trading books. You see the most recent here. It's a collection of many of my personal strategies complete turnkey you don't have to add water just trade them as is and you can get it on amazon or on my website artcollinstrading.com i also put out a 2017 almanac which largely chronicled the performance of systems in the book during the 10 years since publication in other words for all practical purposes, real-time results. And I don't think you can find anything like that anywhere else. At least I haven't been able to. And even I was surprised at how well so many of those systems held up 10 years after publication. Again, I'm a strict mechanical adherent because, frankly, I don't have any other choice. I'm part of the big crowd where trading on instinct I'll lose money like 90 to 95% of the rest of you. Now, since most people are neither systematic nor mechanical, and since most people trade according to whatever whim strikes their fancy at the moment, you do not want to trade like most people unless you're okay being part of the big loser pool. Now, why is that? Why should gut trading be so hard? After all, Successful people almost inevitably get where they are trusting their gut instincts. Trading isn't exactly like everything else. It's almost human in the way that it guns for our psychological weaknesses. Maybe demonic, even. Most people are resistant to taking losses. Most people fear giving back unrealized profits so they get out of their trades too early. Now, this is 180 degrees opposite what it takes to trade successfully, as any trading 101 primer will tell you. You have to maximize your gains, cut your losses short. People tend to kid themselves when studying charts. We tend to see patterns that validate our preconceived notions, our hopes of what the market will do. Conversely, if there were something that could be considered a contrary indicator, often our eyes will just gloss over it. We see what we want to see, and we ignore what we don't. There's the tendency also to lose sight of the only, the only reason to trade speculatively, to make money. 
Now, that may sound like a no-duh, but people trade for other weird reasons. Validation, got to prove something to myself, my spouse, my father. Can't take this loss because taking it will mean I'm a loser. People grudge trade. This market owes me, and I'm going to get it back right now. Trading is addictive. They've demonstrated in labs that the hardest behavior to break, whether you're a human being or a lab rat, is that which is rewarded intermittently. Next time you're in a casino, watch how spellbound some of those entrenched slot machine players seem to be. Again, our wiring is 180 degrees of field, what it takes to be successful. The trades we fear the most tend to pay off the most. I'm a living testimonial to that, both on the right and wrong side of the equation. I've gritted my teeth and plunged into something I swore had no chance of being right this time, terrified. All my floor friends were telling me so, and I was rewarded with my biggest winner of the year, maybe longer. And I've unfortunately also succumbed to the pressure didn't take the trade and got the same result. To the moon profits, only this time with me not aboard. I think any mechanical trader will likely admit seeing a paper win you sidestepped hurts far more than an actual loss that you were supposed to take. And of course, the, conver- the converse of that is that we tend to get the most comfortable and complacent just before the worst trades hit. It's like voodoo. But I've had many years' experience, and you you really should trust me on this. If the human element is taken out of the equation, you don't experience the aforementioned misfortunes. Okay? So that's the, the gist of mechanical trading. It bypasses emotion and natural psychological wiring. It imposes accountability and discipline in following trades, trading rules, and working toward goals. It's very hard to have anything positive imprinted in your psyche if you're not following a model, by the way. Okay? Saw it time after time on the trading floor. People would tout a position, and when it went bad, they'd have an excuse, vowing not to make a similar mistake the next time. But the next time, they have a different explanation, and a different one the next time. Problem is... Good decisions don't necessarily result in profitable trades, and bad ones don't inevitably lead to losses. So the result is like punching your way out of a paper bag. You're not learning anything that can move you forward. With a mechanical system, on the other hand, you have a blueprint, and you know whether it's conforming to what you've seen or it isn't, and you know what you're supposed to be doing. So, on to our subject of the day, Bitcoin trading. Very alluring. Fortunes will be made off it. Won't be any different than any other time, though. Only a small minority will enjoy the windfalls. Well, let's see if we can come up with some sort of trading plan. But first, the inevitable question. What do I, Art Collins, know about Bitcoin? Nothing. Nothing. And neither do you, and neither does nearly anybody else. There's a documentary on Netflix that I watched about Bitcoin. Didn't feel any more educated at the end of the show. Maybe a tad. Nothing I could articulate to anyone. And I don't feel, frankly, that getting more enlightened about Bitcoin will aid my trading anyway. First of all, Fundamental knowledge, in general, tends to be an illusion. Whatever market you're talking about, soybeans, stock market, why would anybody think they have more information than the huge inside interests, okay? Technical trading is our best chance of having control, and of course, I maintain that mechanical trading variety makes the most sense of all. Technically, what we have in Bitcoin is a bubble like the dot-com of the late 90s or the housing bubble of the last decade or a single tulip going for the price of a house back in the uh, 17th century. 
it's probably better for us to understand recurring bubble markets than how bitcoins are exchanged. It's going to be a crash somewhere, but remember, it may occur way beyond what most of us would consider ridiculous. People exploit the long side and wind up rich if they don't stay in too long. That's the way bubbles work. Probably what's attracting us so much is the leverage, the ability to control a potentially large amount of money with a relatively small amount. And the risk to reward, of course, could be huge. Ask someone who bought Bitcoin under $1,000. But in coming up with a strategy, we can't lose sight of the realities specific to this market. We have very little history to look at. Hardcore mechanical developers are saying, check please, right now. And they're probably not wrong. I'm a futures trader, so my data fields would be limited to two sources. There's my board of trade contract, uh, BTC. Unfortunately, the, the contract tracks five bundled Bitcoins, and margin is like $40,000 or so, prohibitively large for most of us, to the point where, you know, i got to ask what the board of trade is, uh, is doing, what it thinks it's doing. The, the other choice is the Chicago Board of Options contract. And now that tracks a single Bitcoin. The symbol is XBT. My obvious trading choice, if I'm going to jump in. Unfortunately, the start date of the contract was December 11th, 2017. Not a lot to look at, I'm afraid. I managed to get some additional data by going to a cash contract which shows up as dollar sign BRTI in trade station. And that's uh, where I plugged in the system idea, resulting in what I'm going to show you. Unfortunately, even that only goes back to April 23rd of 2017. And remember that uh, futures and cash markets are similar but not identical. And the difference between XBT and dollar BRTI is even more different than the average futures cash difference because it has different official opening and closing times. Both markets are practically 24-hour, open continuously, other than weekends, but if I'm entering or exiting off uh, specific times of day, opens, closes, the prices that occur at those times could be radically different and throw off your data completely, particularly when you're looking at whether or not your stops were hit. So we're doing a lot of extrapolating again. I'm offering my thoughts for whatever they're worth. Recent market activity has a completely different character than it did a mere few months ago. If we find a one-size-fits-all strategy to fit the entire field, small as it is, well, that should have encouraging implications. This is what I'm talking about. The inception of Bitcoin goes back a few years, further back than d the data I have at my disposal. For most of that history, we saw a pretty boring baseline holding low volatility. And then sometime around November of 2017, we saw an explosion in volatility and in range sizes. It's like two different markets. So with that in mind, do we want to examine this? I suppose the biggest justification I can come up with is trading some sort of plan is probably better than trading on no plan. You know, you can take a look at the results I'm about to show you and decide. And again, this is nothing I would sell to the public in good conscience, but who am I to say the next few months won't look something like what we're seeing now. So this is what I discovered. And here are the rules for trading the interday Bitcoin system, which you should put into daily bars. Buy any close that is higher than the previous high. Sell short any close that is lower than the previous low. So 
We're entering on closing prices. You have to be alert that the formation is conforming, and it happens at 3.15 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. On Monday through Thursday, you have a chance to correct any mistakes. 15 minutes later, when the market reopens at 3.30. So the close is higher than yesterday's high. You buy. If it's lower, you sell short. You take a $1,000 profit, 1,000 points in the XBT futures, or a $1,500 loss. Hold overnight as many days as necessary to hit either side, and also you would reverse your position any time a contrary signal occurs. So you do have to be watching that 315 close every day. This is a visual of the trades. Lots of activity, as you can see. And these are the results. In the cash dollar BRTI market, okay, from April 23rd, 2017 through February 1st, 2018. $14,700 profit off 56 trades, 53% winners, $262 average trade, winners and losers. The most it took you down at any time was $2,756. Divide that $14,703 net profit by the 2656 drawdown, and that gives you this net profit as a percent of drawdown figure, also known as the return on account, $533. That's a percentage of how much your account would have increased had your starting capital been equal to your worst drawdown amount, $2756. I want to again emphasize, remember, I'm not trying to sell you anything here, just sharing thoughts I've had. The system was tested in a field less than seven months long. It was tested in a cash market which, although similar to the futures, does not have the exact parameters. But I'll also contend, possibly, on the positive side, that I like the methodology because it's simple And simple is where you get your best chance of robustness. The more you complicate a system, the longer it takes to explain it, the more rules it has, the better the chances are that you've refined your system to make it look good, perfect snapshot of the past, with little chance that it will similarly perform into the future. And I also like that the long and short sides contribute a near equal amount of profit, meaning I didn't, for example, tilt the research to favor the upside because we've had an upward sloping market. This is the long side breakdown only, $7,226 profit off 30 trades, 60% accuracy, $240 average trade, 48, 46 worst drawdown for a net profit as a percent of drawdown, totaling 149%. Interestingly, the short side looks better, nearly the same profit, but the drawdown was only 1,900, and the net profit percent of drawdown was 391%. Still, I'm going to suggest something that I Never otherwise do. Normally, I insist that my long and short side rules are mirrored images of each other. Again, I don't want to get into the business of weighing one side heavier than the other just because it conforms that way better in history. History has a way of changing on you, after all. But in this case, one might consider trading the long side only, particularly when holding a position overnight. This market has been trading huge percentages of its value in a single day, sometimes 10% or more. It's not a stable market. It's emotionally driven. That's what we're trading, emotion. Which means it could be particularly vulnerable to some outlier shock. Now, 
while that can drive the market in either direction if you're long you know where your floor is you know the most amount you can lose zero obviously the upside though is limitless and okay how worried should we be about something like that let me direct your attention to another currency uh, the Swiss franc a move eruption that occurred on January 15th 2015 the huge line represents a daily range more than 20 times the, re- the average range preceding it. Anyone holding one contract overnight was now, in effect, holding 20. What happened? Switzerland abandoned the cap, tying it to the value of the euro currency. While the majority of U.S. traders were presumably sleeping and oblivious to what was going on in their franc positions, the market moved from a previous close of 1.0426 to a high of 1.2591. That's a 23.5% increase in value. A short, hapless enough to have gotten out at the highest price, would have taken an instantaneous $30,812 loss per contract. That was the franc, remember. Not unstable, unlike the Bitcoin. So in short, your takeaways... There is not enough historical data to provide a disclaimer-free Bitcoin system, and I'm not saying I'm giving you one. There is, however, huge leverage potential for those wishing to be aggressive. And if you're going to do it, I would contend that following a strategy is always better than not following one. Again, we've discussed how the real underminer to performance is human emotion. The strategy I demonstrated today is simple, and the profits come from both longs and shorts near equally. It may, however, be a good idea to consider long side trading only as worst case losses would be capped. Please check me out at my Art Collins trading website. And I do try to answer every email. Thanks for joining me.